Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Pharaoh and Cleopatra. I am Nermite and today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna show a little bit of my childhood memories, a little bit of my childhood free time right over here. Like this is a, this is a little trip into the past when he was just a little shit and, well, he didn't exactly know how to play video games by that time. If you somehow missed this game, this is probably not a surprise because this game is technically speaking, if I remember correctly, almost 20 years old. This game is actually older than some of the people actually making videos on YouTube. Just saying. This is how old this game is. This was basically the city builder of, of my childhood memories. Uh, this game along with a game called Zeus and Poseidon, which of course the Poseidon was an expansion pack. And before all of that, there was also a game called Caesar. It was called, to be precise, Caesar Free. I've used to play all of those games. I was terrible at them. Okay, maybe expect of Zeus. I was actually quite decent at Zeus. But I was terrible at playing Caesar and I was even worse at playing Pharaoh. Same applies to the Cleopatra because this was exactly the same game and had like, just additional missions. But, yeah, this was the game that I used to play. I think I was seven by that time. And I used to play this thing with my dad. We we're both terrible at this game. Uh, if I remember correctly, my dad... I think he've passed Caesar 3 to mission like around 8 or so. And I was still stuck on mission 3, which is based, by the way, a tutorial mission in Caesar 3. And in the Cleopatra, I think I was stuck on... Febs? I don't remember, but I remember that my dad was even worse at Pharaoh. <laughs> you see the concept over here? Later on, of course, they, were, they released Zeus. And they also later on make a game called, uh, if I remember correctly, Emperor... Uh, the Middle East or something like that, which was actually the last game of Impression Games uh, Which was actually a really cool city builder game. It kind of runs quite well on modern uh, Hardware as well, but Pharaoh Yeah, Pharaoh is gonna run terribly. I will have to probably use some editing uh, Magic over here to make this thing, you know, look decent at least on, on YouTube thing Now you probably wonder what other games they used to make. Well, they are responsible also for Lords of the Lerm If you don't know Lords of the Lerm that game is basically the father or grandfather of the game called, of the series of games called Stronghold. So yeah, impression games, they were the guys when it comes to strategy games. The thing is that they have been bought out by Activision and apparently Activision completely doesn't give a two shits about actually, well, resurrecting the old series. Well, sucks to be them then. Now you probably wonder why the fuck did I record this old shit that is gonna probably crash any minute. It's because, ladies and gentlemen, that recently I have found out on Steam a game called Pharaoh New Era. Basically, this thing is a uh, attempt of resurrecting the Pharaoh game, the Pharaoh franchise. I'm not exactly sure what the developers of the Pharaoh New Era are planning to do. I know that they are trying to copy the campaign from the original Pharaoh game. They are planning to add a few more buildings. They are planning to add, of course, some new music, new sounds, uh, new cinematics and stuff like that. But they have to, technically speaking, recreate the game from from nothing. Because, as I said, the original code is owned by Activision, and I don't think they want to share, bastards. So I'm not exactly gonna play Pharaoh, uh, this Pharaoh, because I already finished it. As you see over here, this is the entirety of the... Yeah, it's in Polish, shut up. Yeah, if you don't remember, I'm still from Poland, you know, that haven't fucking changed. But I finished the game long before I started to do the entire YouTube thing. And I got the stupid addiction of actually saving all of my games, as you can see over here. So I finished it the Cleopatra and I finished it Pharaoh. And what I wanted to do actually today is that I wanted to show you one of the final missions of the Cleopatra expansion pack. Which is of course a city called Alexandria. If I could only bloody find it, that is. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, ah, that is Cleopatra. Okay, I think that was mission 16 or something like that. Uh, 15? 14? Ah, there it is. Yes. I just don't remember which save it was. Okay, probably the, this one. Think I found it. Oh shit, oh my god. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna work like shit. Just so you're gonna be aware of this. This entire thing is gonna work like shit. But it still looks beautiful. I mean, say what you want, but this game aged well. It might have looks, you know, it kind of looks like you could play this thing on a mobile phone. Yeah, sure, you know, Windows 95, 98, X XP, stuff like that. Employees need that. Yeah, I fucking know. So I left the city at some point, 
And I don't actually remember what I was doing over here, but what I remember is that I remember the layout of my city. So I think a good idea is to start from the farmlands that I had on the western banks of, of the uh, delta of the Nile, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this is where my, my city is located. So basically speaking, uh, this is the uh, the western side of my of my city, of my grand city. And this is basically where I get the majority of my food. I've managed to upgrade the houses quite a lot. Uh, basically, the majority of my houses are common residences and I don't want to upgrade them any further because I lack uh, another source of food, if I remember correctly. Yeah, uh, I, need, I can evolve this thing to, to, level, to another level, but I need to supply them with another source of food. And that's actually it's not that easy to think about that. It's actually quite hard to get food around here. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a little bit around, okay? You're gonna you're gonna witness the masterpiece of my architecture design, you know. Uh, just so you know, if it, if you are not aware of this thing, uh, there was a, a mechanic in this game. Oh, sorry, not this thing. There was a mechanic in the game, outside of the fact that you have constantly worship the fucking gods, uh, and this is by the way on the hard difficulty, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Jesus it's on hard God. difficulty. So uh, there's a mechanic in the game that a lot of people abuse. The mechanic is simple, it comes to the worker pool. Basically how it works is that every single house you have in the city outside of the villas and out, uh, sorry, outside of the palaces and outside of the, yeah, villas, I think that was villas. All of the, uh, all the remaining houses create you workers, obviously. Uh, every single house that you make in your, in your city will add to the worker pool. Now, let's say that this is like a typical neighborhood for my workers, right? And I'm gonna make like a like a slum thingy over here, right? So that means that the people living over here and people living over here will get combined together into one pool. Now, we got this thing over here, which is basically a worker camp. Uh, people from here work at the farms. So the guy over here, you build this thing, and the guy over here starts to walk around and he's gonna look for workers. If he's gonna get uh, next to a house, if he's gonna walk next to a house, then he's gonna grab workers from that worker pool and add it to the building. The idea is that this thing needs to be quite close to a house, right? So, the uh, the challenge that I had, outside of the fact that I had to play this thing on hard difficulty, was that I was not allowed to create any ghettos. Ghettos were not allowed. I think I've did uh, ghettos in one city and only in one city for the entirety of the Pharaoh and through the Cleopatra campaign. Every other city didn't had didn't had any ghettos and I got so much food that those guys are actually not trans transporting anything. Hey, move it. Oh my god This is gonna be a fucking disaster <laughs> Ah, Fire in the city tell me more, but anyway allow me the great pharaoh of Egypt to show you around my humble humble home Which is Alexandria the capital city. Yeah, so just so you know the camera is yeah The scrolling around the map is gonna look a little bit chunky because, you know, this is an old game. So yeah, this is over here my little farming community that I have. Yeah, my farming community is actually living in really decent houses because of reasons. And then of course paying taxes because of the other reasons. Uh, this is where I make like a bunch of papyruses because I got so many libraries and school in the cities that those people are the best educated guys in the entirety of the world right now. Yeah, you know, that's a fact. Because I'm the only known civilization, but that's outside of the point. Uh, then of course we need to have some security around here. So I got a f m melee fort, if I remember correctly. The Rams, which is called the Rams, the infantry company. And then of course we get ourselves a bit of a uh, archer company over here, right next to it to support them. Then of course we got granaries over here, some more granaries over there, uh, some more papyrus production over here. And then of course some warehouses to bring the resources from the main city, from the ports and from the workshops over there. Uh, to the small small farming community over here. So we got the warehouse with pottery. Uh, we got warehouse with uh, with linen, and we got of course we got a warehouse with beer. Then we got some more farms over here uh, that are not using the actual float of the river, you know, for their benefits. They're actually using like normal farms and stuff like that. So we got grain over here, and then we got uh, of course barley over here to produce beer. A wonderful, wonderful, delicious, ah, cooling in the sun beer. Quest goods. Sure, yeah, sure. Put it in your throat if you have to. Then I got like an, another f small f uh, farming community over here. Yeah, they got their own, own little library. They got uh, their own little school somewhere around here, which I cannot currently locate. Uh, 
of course they got like some dances and stuff like that. A bunch of people are moving outside of my city, so probably probably something happened over there. I'm gonna check that thing in a second. Uh, and as I said, no ghettos are allowed in my city right now. Okay, so basically this is one of the ideas to not have a ghetto. If I'm actually gonna get the uh, okay, there you go. So as you can see, there's like a small road inside of this neighborhood, right? And along this road. Uh, all the necessary mm, uh, buildings, all the necessary services are provided to those people. Only for the farms to have access to the worker pool. Because th th this is this is not an actual worker pool, right? This is just the possibility to have my farms have an access to the worker pool. The actual worker pool is in the city. Uh, then I got like a small uh, city thingy over here. I don't know why those guys have devolved. Something. Okay, they're evolving back. Okay, well, something happened over here. Some more farms over here. And then, of course, the Great Walls of Alexandria. The gatehouse, statues, some more Berlis farms, some more normal farms over here. And, of, of course, uh, one more little farming community over here, right next to the, to the Great Walls of Alexandria itself. Then, of course, we got the main gate over here, which is, of course, appropriately secured by guards. Uh, traditional forts in front of the city gates just in case if some idiot will be stupid enough to actually try to attack the city now this is the uh, the beer neighborhood this is where all the beer is getting made for the uh, for the great city of Alexandria another small uh, worker uh, neighborhood over here which is as I said the same idea if I'm gonna actually show you okay maybe not like this uh, maybe with this no no with this maybe with this no no with this Ah, which was the proper one? Okay, this one over here. So as you can see, the inside road that provides me with services, right? And then, if you're gonna take a closer look, how this thing exactly looks like. Uh, I got... Oh wait, actually this, uh, this production chain takes the workers from here. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So, I got, for example, beer production over here, right? And how do they get access to workers? Well... If we're gonna play, uh, 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 <laughs> take a closer look, there's a road over here. So the guy from here walks along this road over here next to those little palm trees. And right behind those palm trees are the houses. So he goes over here, he takes the workers from the worker pool and then he goes back to his, uh, to his appropriate business and then he provides that business with workers. Same goes over here, right? So I got the road goes like this around here, okay? This is the access in into the worker area, and this is the access to the actual neighborhood with the people. So the, uh, the guy from the uh, the guy from the from the let's say from the brewery, he takes a little walk around this road over here. He walks next to this house over here, and because of that, he gets access to the entirety of the worker pool. There's an actual like normal neighborhood over here, right, with appropriate houses stuff like that. And this is basically the idea that I rise and repeat all the time. Then you got the Grand Palace of yours truly, of course. Yeah, my palace. This is this is where I take my piss and stuff like that. Some more statues, some more gardens, uh, few libraries. Then of course we got the <laughs> the uh, how to how to say it the highborn neighborhood. This is where my palace estate are located. If you don't know, the houses in this game evolve, right? So you start with a simple shack, as if I could actually put the shack somewhere. Maybe actually I'm gonna find some shacks in the city because maybe something had evolved. Uh, accept, thanks, whatever, don't care. I don't see any actual houses that have evolved, which is kind of annoying. Because I cannot show you anything, but I think I had some evolved houses over here. Ah, there you go. So this is not exactly like a, like a fully evolved house. But it's not a ghetto, right? It's it's just like a just like a humble house. An actual ghetto looks more like more or less like this. If I'm gonna actually put a few houses over here, yo, move in, come on, chop chop, boys. I don't have time. There you go. So this is an actual ghetto, right? This thing over here. You start with this, and you have to provide your people with with goods, with water, with religion, with services, with food, with ceramics, with beer. Uh, we have to beautify the area, and eventually the houses will grow. They're gonna grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, they're gonna get to common residences, with a, which I have all over the place. They're gonna evolve to something called a manor, like a, or a, how I how I like to call it, a small villa, right? 
So they evolve into this thing. This is where you get the real taxes. This is where you get the real money. Because the people living in those houses don't provide you with a worker pool. They don't provide you with any workers, even though that 120 people live inside. Uh, but they provide you with shit amounts of money. Like, shit loads of amount of money. And then, after you provide them with another resources, you know, a few more goods and services, eventually, they're gonna evolve to this monstrosity. The palace estate. Which is basically the final, final Egyptian dwelling. You cannot go beyond the palace estate. And this is where the real money is getting made. Like, this is how much money I got. And all of this money is made, basically, mostly from taxes. Like, I get all of that crap from taxes. I don't export almost anything. I just tax the living shit out of my people. And you need to provide them with shit, shit lots of services. You need to provide them with, uh, with, uh, with, with beer by normal means and by building a pub. You have to provide them with three different deities. Three different deities. You have to provide them with a zoo. You have to provide them with three bazaars because one bazaar is not capable of keeping up with the demands of the people. You have to provide them with all of the possible entertainment links you can. Of course, you have to provide them with water. And then you have to surround the entire neighborhood with appropriate statues. Because otherwise, the people will complain that they are living next to the neighbor who cannot afford a proper swimming pool in his fucking backyard. Another fifth one, actually. You get the idea. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little time, bit. So this is my palace estate area. This is where the really high-born people live. Uh, then, of course, we have some more houses around it. Because, well, why not? Some more gardens, some more statues, another storage area for the food and for the goods uh, necess necessary for my city to thrive and grow. So, of course, uh, we got linen, we got ceramics, we got luxury goods, which is necessary for the palaces. Uh, we got uh, six granaries, which are necessary to keep up with the demands of the food. Then we got the main square of the city itself, right? This is where I got s spacious residences. Yeah, because for all reasons. I've actually managed to provide them with a bit more of a, you know, bigger variety of a food so they can grow. Uh, and I don't just notice that I don't have enough meat. I have to probably block that thing. Okay, maybe don't provide you with meat, but provide you with fish. How about that, huh? Does that sound fair? I hope so. I just hope I, just hope I haven't made a mistake over here. But anyway, this is my, uh, this is my main city square right next to the great temples. I got myself... The Temple of Ra, the biggest possible kingdom, in, uh, p possible temple in the entirety of the city, which is surrounded by uh, by a mausoleum for Cleopatra and for a mausoleum for, if I remember correctly, Caesar. That was Caesar, who it was? Wait, hold on a second. Caesar's bloody death at the points of assassination. Uh, no, that was not Caesar. That was Octavian, I think. And has driven you, our Pharaoh, Cleopatra the Seventh, into grief and mourning. Gone uh, is your lover, mentor, confidant, and powerful ally. Oct I think it was Octavian or Mark Antony. I don't remember which uh, which one was was fucking Cleopatra at that time, actually. But yeah, basically one is for Cleopatra, one uh, the other one is for her lover. Uh, then you got, of course, some additional fortifications and stuff like that. Walls, because for reasons. Uh, to the north of the city, I got another small farming community, which is not fully evolved, because. I was I was not patient enough. Uh, then you go. Of course, we got another gate over here. Some more uh, neighborhoods around here. Some more beer production. Yeah, we drink a lot over here. Like alcoholism is an actual problem in this city. Uh, then you got the city palace, which holds 61,251 denaries, which is reasons, you know. And then of course you got the Grand Harbor of Alexandria, along with some more houses. The main road growing through the entirety of the city. Some more workers over here, some more workspaces, uh, more temples, more statues, more gardens, more warehouses, papyruses, beer, ceramics, uh, luxury goods, fishes, more fishing rafts, more docks, more harbors. And then, of course, on this side of my palace, which is located over here, you got the, uh, the villa estate, the manor estates, which basically, as I said, provide you with additional money, like great amounts of money. And then you have my private little dynasty mansion right over here. Because, well, I needed to have another residence, residence next to my main residence. Because, well, I, I, I needed an additional living space, okay? I'm kind of fat, but you get the idea. And then you cannot forget about the great Grand Library 
of Alexandria that was actually lost to the earthquake because some idiot decided to build it in the wrong spot and that thing have collapsed in an actual real life and which is a real shame because uh, according to historians the great uh, library of Alexandria had so much fucking scrolls so much fucking knowledge that you, basically you could say that uh, when this thing got destroyed uh, humanity got regressed like around 500 years or maybe more that's how much, much knowledge was stored over there. And it went to shit. Because nobody thought of making a fucking backup copy. Idiots. Fire in the city. Yeah, I know. I got some problems with that thing. Then, to the east, uh, to the northern side of the uh, of the trade harbor, you get a little military harbor, which of course has the military ships uh, and the military transport ships with additional fortifications to the actual harbor area itself. And then, of course, you cannot forget about the Grand... Lighthouse of Alexandria, which is also destroyed at some point in history because well Yeah, some idiot didn't know how to build this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> that's how it went more or less And I got a little little tiny island over here, which provides me with additional uh, Warships just in case if some idiot would decide this is gonna be a great idea to swim inside You know try to avoid the actual military harbor to the right and he's gonna be like oh sure I'm gonna quickly dive in I'm gonna rush Neo in his stupid little harbor, and I'm gonna be basically victorious. Na 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 na. That's why those guys are standing over here. That, that, that's the sole reason. And as I said, no ghettos are allowed, so this is basically the maximum level I can provide the people living on the island uh, with. I cannot provide them with anything better. This is the maximum house level they're gonna be able to achieve. Same goes for those guys over here. There is no possibility for me to give them anything better, but. You know, as I said, as long as that thing is not a ghetto, I'm fine with it. Oh, speaking of ghettos, something happened over here. Let me guess, you run out of water. You're living five meters away from a fucking well and you run out of, out of water. How did you run out of the water? I have no damn idea. Ah, Faro. I did miss your stupidity, man. I really did miss your stupidity. <laughs> so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed little trip around Alexandria. I hope you have fun. If you want to try the game yourself, I'm not really recommending this thing because the game is gonna probably explode on Windows 10. Probably. I, I'm not saying it will. So far it haven't crashed on me, which is a surprise. Uh, but if you really, really care about older games, then I probably suggest that this time you will try to visit good old games, which basically have uh, the game patched with uh, the fan made patch which improves the game it improves the screen because I am playing this thing on a really tight screen uh, as I said I'm gonna probably try to do some editing magic around here and make it look, look pretty and decent on YouTube but when you're gonna be playing this thing it's gonna look horrible so I kinda do recommend that you're gonna go to the Gulot games and get the Faro game and Cleopatra over there simply because it's gonna be better but oh there's a fire over here why there is fire over here god damn it it's gonna be just better for you uh you have a better experience playing the game and that game from good old games actually comes with uh already installed fan made patch which improves the game uh like a lot it's, it, the the immersion it's, it's, it's improved man it's improved a lot just saying so yeah if you want to try yourself to build an ancient city which is currently on fire constantly what the fuck is going on around here i have no idea uh, if you want to try your uh, your your best abilities to build yourself a magnificent city in the middle of the desert well then ladies and gentlemen i do highly invite you to try out faro you will not regret and if you want to try out the upcoming faro new era game for that thing you have fucking fire god damn it I don't know what's going on around here, but all of a sudden all of my city is burning down. Very fucking funny game. Very funny indeed. Yes, yeah, so I have to probably do some fixing around here. Uh, if you want to try Faro New Era, for that thing you have to wait. I, I'm not exactly sure when the game will be released. I know it eventually will be released. And there's another fight. What the hell is going on over here? Ugh. There's a fucking firehouse over here, and you're gonna tell me that my fucking scribe school that has the stupid ass papyruses, which are actually quite hard to require, just oh, there's the fire guy. You're fired, <laughs> you idiot! God damn it, my fucking breweries! Oh well, if you excuse me now, ladies and gentlemen, I have to get back to rebuilding my destroyed city. Ah, god fucking damn it, man! <laughs> 
God damn it. Oh well, that's a work in progress. But anyway, if you want to try it yourself, links in the description below. As always, so go ahead, give it a try, let me know what you think. And, well, maybe, just maybe, we can actually play the new Faro in the future. I don't know, we'll see. But that's gonna be the thing I'm gonna leave for the future episodes. So let me know if you actually want to see uh, some more of my cities. Uh, I got basically all of them saved. So, you know, if you want to... Uh, if you want me to show you around other of my beautiful disastrous cities, do feel free to let me know in the comment section below because for now, I'm gonna leave this thing as of yes. And thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you like this episode, please help us a lot. I'll see you all in the next video.